What's up, Cal gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So we're solving problem 4.4. I just solved problem 4.3. It's basically the same problem, but we're finding the displacement of D instead of C. So check that out if you're looking for that. But anyway, we have these four or these three loads acting on this beam here, and there's three different sections. And our goal is to find the displacement of C. So how are we going to do that, right? Well, we have these forces acting at different points along the beam, so we're going to need to break it down into three separate sections to find the displacement. But in case, in this case, we're only looking for the displacement of C, so we can basically ignore all of this point D to the right. All right? So let's go ahead and find that. So I left that over too much, but what's our equation for this, right? Displacement, right? Displacement is equal to PL over AE. But because we're gonna have multiple displacements, right, we're gonna need to check AB and BC, we're gonna need to add them up. So let's write that the displacement of C is equal to the displacement of AB plus the displacement of BC, right? That's what we wanna do. So now we have the equation we need, we just need to find the displacement of AB and the displacement of CD. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we need to find a couple of things, right? We need this equation, we know area, we know our modulus elasticity for the A36 steel is 200 GPA. And we know the length of each section. We just need to find the force in each section, which is P. So the force in each section is the normal force acting at each section. So to do that, let's take some cross sections. So our first cross section, I tell you BC. So it's going to be right there. That's our first cross section. We took a cut and got rid of everything to the left of it. Now, so this is our normal force. It's going to go this way. We need to find out what that's going to be. So let's draw in the rest of our forces. We have this two kilonewton force and we have this four kilonewton force. So if you remember from static, it's pretty easy. You just take some of the forces in the x direction. You're gonna find that the normal force here has to be equal to six kilonewtons, and it's gonna be pushing to the left. Now, when the normal force is pushing outward from the beam, that means it's elongating. It's pulling away, and that pulling is gonna make it wanna get longer. So we're gonna make sure to use a positive number for that. So let's see. So displacement of C is equal to uh, PL over AE. So both of these are going to have the area and E the same, so I'm going to factor out an AE. Just going to make our math a little easier. So we're looking at BC now, so our equation is PL. So the force we just found is 6 kilonewtons, and the length we found of BC is 1.5 meters, so we can just plug in 1.5 here. So now we need to find out what AB is, the displacement of AB. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to draw a similar force body diagram. So right, this is B, C, and D. So let's draw on the forces we know again. We have this six kilonewton force, not six kilonewton, two kilonewton. We have this four kilonewton force. And then we have this nine kilonewton force of B pushing this way. So that nine kilonewton force is gonna change our normal. So again, our normal is gonna be here. And if we add them up, we know we have six kilonewtons going this way, but nine kilonewtons pushing back this way. That means we're gonna need another three kilonewtons pushing to the right to cancel that. Now, this normal is pushing inward, right? It's contracting. It's gonna make us wanna shrink for this area. That means we need to use a negative number. So we're gonna subtract that three kilonewton force times the length of it, which is one meter. And so there we go, we have the AB here and DC here. So with this equation, we just need to plug in A, which is 50 millimeters squared, and E, which is 200 gigapascals, and you're gonna find that displacement of C is equal to 0 0.6 millimeters. There you go, so let's see you solve this problem. All right, not too tricky. Check out problem 4.3, the channel previous in the playlist for this to see how much D gets displaced. And yeah, check out my playlist, of course. Just uh, practice some mechanics with me. So yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.